Welcome to the AP Physics Lecture Notes on Rotational Inertia. Rotational Inertia. We can think of a wheel as consisting of many particles located at various distance from the axis of rotation. Let's take this large cylinder here as an example. Okay. At the center is the axis of rotation and we can go up with the radius r and we can see that there are different radiuses there. So if you apply the force here, it's applying a torque. If you're um, applying a force here, there's a torque and there's different torques. There are different torques amount because there are different r values that exist on this disk. Okay. If you sum all these various torque together, you get the net torque. This net torque is called the moment of inertia or called rotational inertia. Here you go. These are all the torques at different various positions on the disk. If you sum together, you get the summation of the torque is equal to uh, the moment of inertia times the angular acceleration. Here you could see that the angular acceleration, acceler acceleration of an extended object is proportional to the net torque acting on it. This equation is the rotational analog of Newton's second law of motion. Let me write it for you. This is what it means by analog. It's the same. This is Newton's second law. This equation for rotational um, this equation is the rotational analog of Newton's second law of motion. We have torque replacing force. Here's torque replacing force. Moment of inertia here, I, is going to replace mass. And angular acceleration, alpha, is replaced by the linear acceleration. We can see that the moment of inertia, I, which is the measurement of the rotational inertia of an object, plays the same role for a rotational motion that math does for translational motion. The rotational inertia of a ridge object depends not only on its mass, but on how the mass is distributed with respect to the axes. When the mass is concentrated further away from the axis of rotation, the greater the inertia, the inertia is greater. So let's take a look here for an example on what we just said here. We just go look at the disk. The large diameter on this disk will have a greater moment of inertia. We say it's a greater moment of inertia because it has a larger radius. Here we say it has a smaller diameter. Okay, so also a smaller radius. Therefore, it has a smaller rot rotational inertia. Okay, because mass here if you want to think about all the mass as the different particles, we could say that the mass here, or all, the, the mass particles are all spread out. Okay, that's why it has more greater rotational inertia. And here you could say that the mass particles are particles are all centered in the middle or the center are all centered in the center. Okay, that's why it has smaller rot um, moment of inertia. So let's take a look. All right. What I would like you to do is that these are all your different moments of inertia and you're going to put these to where it should be here using this idea. All right. We'll start off with the basic, which is the hollow or thin centrifugal shell, which is I is equal to MR squared. Which one of this do you believe goes in for the solid disk? Pause the video and try. 
Is it two fifth MR squared, two thirds MR squared, or one half MR squared? It is actually one half MR squared. Okay. I would like you to notice something that the moments of inertia from here, from the thin hoop to the solid hoop, okay, this is less than the solid version, okay? Why is it less than the solid version? Look at the way this, um, the way the mass particles are separated. It's all on the what? Outside, right? But here, all the masses are what? Evenly spread out. This is why this has a smaller moment of inertia, okay? All right? So this, we have a smaller rotational inertia. Okay, because the mass are all over here at this dot, but here it's all separated out. Okay, so this is spread out more, this is spread out less. All right, now if you take a look at this, okay, which one do you think this one should be? Okay, which one, the thin sphere or the solid sphere, which one is the least? Okay like versus in this idea we can think about the mass think about all the masses being separated here all the mass particles are all on the what outside here they're all what distributed evenly right everywhere so think about how this one would go pause the video and try it all right here you go the thin one Okay, the thin one will have the two-thirds, and the solid one will have the two-fifth. Why? It's the same idea. It's going to have less than the uh, thin version. Oh, I had a typo here. Less than the solid version. Oh, that's wrong. This should be less than the thin version. Sorry about that. This should be thin. Okay. This should be less than the thin version. Okay. All right. The thin version here will have more moment of inertia. The solid version will have l less than. Okay. Okay, what about these? Okay, which one do you think is going to have more? Which one's going to have less? If the um, if it's through the center, is it right here? Is it through the center or through the end? Okay, we would say that the through the center it would be one one half. And here, through the end, it would be one third. Okay, why is that? Okay, let me let me bring this up. Let's see if I could bring this up exactly like this. Okay, so here's the one half version, and here is the one third version. Okay, so notice again. It's like this. Do you see how the particles here are at the right here? Do you see how it was spread out on just on the circumference? Same thing here, just out on the outer shell here. It's the same idea. All the masses are on the outside. But notice for the solids, right? It's all centered. It's all distributed evenly. So that's like equivalently to the center. Remember, this is going to be less than the thin version, okay? Here's a shortcut for all the ideas that we just brought together, is this idea, okay? Here is the key concept that you should get from these notes so far. 
The more solid or fill in an object has, the less moment of inertia it has. One half, two fifth, one twelfth. Okay. The more hollow the object has, the more moment of inertia it has. Okay. Good. Okay. This is just something that you might have to memorize if you do not understand it. Okay. All right. So now that we understand what moment of inertia is for the different objects, we can do a little race. Okay. What I did here is I ranked the moment of inertias. Okay. We should see these from our previous example. And you're going to rate them uh, based on their moment of inertia. Okay. Excluding the ice cube. What goes, and if you need to plug in some values, let the mass be one kilogram and the radius be one meter. Okay. Doesn't matter. So the greatest value is going to be the centrifugal shell. Okay. This is equivalent to what we say here is a hoop. All right. Then we have the spherical shell, which is at 0.67 with the two thirds. Then you get the solid cylinder, which is 0.5 with the one half, and the solid sphere, which is the least, at two fifth, which is 0 0.4. Okay, so this is how it would rank up just based on it. Okay, now what I would like you to do here is rank which one will reach the bottom first. In short, what I'm asking for is based on the moment of inertia, guess which one is the fastest. Which one will reach the bottom first? Pause the video here if you would like. All right. So pause the video because I'm going to run it. All right. Let's see if your guess is correct. So the ice cube hits first. Then the red solid sphere then run pause then second place after so the you're going to ignore the ice cube first place would go to the red solid sphere then you get the solid cylinder which is the yellow then you are going to get third which is the sphere shell then last you are going to get the hoop why is that so here you go. Here's the next part. I only took a screenshot of half of it. So the red sphere went down first. That was first. The second place with the solid sphere. Third place was the spherical shell. And fourth place is the, the centrifugal shell. All right. I ignore the cube until the next part. I'm going to give you an explanation. So. Why is the object with the less moment of inertia here the fastest down the ramp? Why is that? Okay, pause the video and try to do it. Try to think why. All right, here's the answer. So the notes that I want to get you is this idea. Rotational kinetic energy is one half the moment of inertia I. Um, angular um, angular velocity, okay, which is omega squared, and the unit here are just joules, okay. So I'm going to read this to you. An object that rolls, why its center of mass undergoes translational motion, which is just linear motion, will have both translational and rotational kinetic energy. That means a ball rolling will have both a linear and a rotating kinetic energy. Okay. Defined by this. The total kinetic energy can be defined as one half mv squared plus one half um, i omega squared. This, the first part, can be generalized in my example to just be your ke of your translational which is just your kinetic energy that's in a line. Then you have your kinetic energy, which is just rotating. Good. All right. So here I set up the equation by putting 
again, I'm generalizing and just simplifying, okay? I plug in the uh, moments of inertias for all of them, right? And remember, Ke, which is your total kinetic energy, is equal to Ke translational, which is the line kinetic energy, plus the 0 0.4, okay? So in this case, if you did the math, okay, the Ke here in a line would be what? Here it would be, assuming the total kinetic energy is 2, here it would be equals to 1.6 joules, right? Because again, that's 2 subtract 0 0.4 is 1.6. That's what I did there. Here it would be equal to 1.5 joules. Here it would be, I'm rounding here, of course, equal to 1.33, repeating. And this one would be uh, equal to 1, sorry, joule, 1 joule. Okay, again. It's one half mv squared, assuming mass is equal in all of them. Okay, you can just c compare its velocities this way. So, why did the red sphere come down first? Well, its translational kinetic energy was 1.6 joules, right? That's how much kinetic energy it had in a line. And this one had the smallest, right? So, it was at one joule, okay? Now, remember our ice cube friend here right we had our ice cubed and when it hit the ice cube actually went down first why in theory should the ice cube be here so for the ice cube okay let's make this for the ice cube the ice cubed the ice cubes kinetic energy was going to be ke um, tr translational, which is in a line, and Ke rotational, correct? No, there is actually no rotational. Why? It's on a frictionless surface. Okay? Saw that? That was on a frictionless surface. So all its kinetic energy was transformed to its kinetic energy um, translationally, which is in a line. So in this case, for the ice cube, it was just uh, 2 and 2. So this is all translational kinetic energy for the ice cube. This is the reason why the ice cube went down first, okay? But here I wanted you to see how the um, rotational kinetic energy um, is affected, okay? All right, so you should be able to use these notes here Okay, to get a better understanding of how rotational inertia works. This is the definition of rotational inertia, how we got it from torque. You are never asked to derive rotational inertia in physics 1, but you have to understand um, why each equation is the way it is. And remember this idea. The more solid or fill in the object, the less moment of inertia it has. The more empty or hollow an object is, the more moment of inertia it has. Okay? The moment of inertia that is the most is going to be the slowest. So I can write it here. This is going to be the slowest. But here it has the largest moment of inertia. Moment of inertia. This is the fastest. And what I mean by fastest is that it's line. It's kinetic energy on a line. And this is because this has the what least moment of inertia. Okay. On the AP physics test, you're never asked to do the calculation, but you will actually have to rank it. So get the idea. Okay. All right. There you go.